Everybody right now has dreams, don't they, guys? All right, everybody in the NFL, I have a dream of making it in the NFL. I got a dream of winning a Super Bowl. I got a dream of being in a Pro Bowl. I'm really not into dreams anymore, okay? I'm into fucking nightmares. You guys with me on that? Mosh pit. You got to end somebody's dream. You got to take their job. You got to take their heart. Are you guys clear about this NFL shit now? We're not trying to go to the Peach Bowl. We're not trying to go to the Gator Bowl or the Blue Bonnet Bowl. We're trying to go to the Super Bowl. The autumn wind is a pirate. Blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down, and laugh when he's conquered and won. Just win, baby. Ah! I love it. You know, I sit in my office and I just shake. I get so excited. <laughs> What's good, Raider Nation? What's good, YouTube? Welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you guys had a good time, ate a lot of turkey, got to see your families, but most importantly, stayed safe. Unfortunately, I'll be staying home this year because of COVID. Um, the whole family's locking down a little bit this year, so uh, no turkey for me, but um, hey, it's all right. I'll, I'll make do. I'll be all right. I also want to apologize for not having a video out for you guys Monday or Sunday night after the Chiefs game. Uh, things have been kind of crazy. My grandma's in the hospital right now, and she's going to be having heart surgery tomorrow, so things have been kind of nuts. My you know, my video schedule has been up in the air. There's been a lot of other things that I've been focusing on, and uh, you know, rightfully so. But I kind of wanted to just fill you guys in and let you know what's going on with me, because you know, my I, I don't know what my uploading schedule is going to look like in the future. I'm going to try to get out a Thursday video and a Sunday video, like I have been for you guys. But um, you know, like I said, things are things are pretty crazy right now, so I don't know what the future holds. Hopefully, everything will be okay after tomorrow, and we can go back to normal. But yeah, man, I just wanted to fill you guys in because you guys have been so supportive uh, throughout this journey of mine on YouTube. And, you know, I love interacting with you guys. And, you know, I don't want you to think that I'm bailing or anything. I just, you know, some things pop up in life and you got to deal with them. And, and that's just part of, you know, being a human being, being a person on this planet, especially with the craziness that's going on right now in 2020. That definitely doesn't help. It, you know, magnifies things by, you know, tenfold. So. Just want to keep you guys in the loop and say that I appreciate you guys for everything. So let's get into some Raiders, baby. Let's go. So we all know what happened Sunday night. Um, it was a great game. Uh, the offense played great. Derek Carr is playing out of his mind. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go into, into too much depth. Drop balls killed us again this week. Very winnable game. A very disappointing game to lose, too. I was uh, I was depressed, man, uh, for a couple days. That, that really hung over me. But look, you know, as a Raider fan, you got to be proud and you got to be excited. Because I tell you what, man, those Chiefs, they don't want to see us come playoff time. They know firsthand what this Raiders team is capable of, and Raiders should have won two out of two. Uh, that game came down to the wire. Um, I'm going to call it a blown coverage on the last play. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But um, but you had the two drop passes on third down, and you had, you know, the, the blown coverage, in my opinion. That's the game. And... It's that close from handing the Chiefs their only two losses. The Raiders even moved up in ESPN's power rankings after the loss. They got number three here on ESPN. I saw it on NFL.com. They were ranked eighth. So, look, people are putting some respect on this Raiders team, and it's well-deserved. They're dangerous. So, as disappointing as that loss was, keep your heads up. Um, fight through it. We got the Falcons this week. So, we have a chance to hit the reset button and go out and get a win. But... For the most part, guys, be proud, keep your heads up high, and, and be excited for this Raiders team because the future is bright. I mentioned Derek Carr, man, playing at an elite level, and he really is. Uh, since week five, PFF has him as the third highest graded quarterback, and he's behind Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes, and that's it. Um, you can throw Aaron Rodgers in there because uh, I think week five was like the week that he had the bye, and then he came back and, and, ha and had a, a really bad game against the, the Bucks, I think it was. But, um, yeah, put, put Aaron Rodgers in there. But, dude, Derek Carr is the top five quarterback this year. Changed my mind. <laughs> I, I see a lot of people hating. I've seen, you know, Raider Cody on Twitter. He, he's thrown it out a couple times. Raider Cody stays gassing up Derek Carr, and for good reason. And I agree with him. 
I think Derek Carr is a top five quarterback this year. People need to start respecting this man. And just wait. He's only getting better and better. And once this team starts to gel a little bit, that defense hopefully can figure things out. I don't know if it's confusion or if it's, you know, scheme problems. I, I can't tell what the what the issue is. It looks like guys are confused a lot. But um man, once once that kind of figures itself out a little bit, this team is gonna be so dangerous. And Derek Carr is a huge part of it. His decision making, his his playmaking ability, his leadership, everything is coming into play. He's in the year, he's in year three of a system for the first time in his career. He's got a team built around him, and you guys are seeing the ripple effects. Derek Carr is a franchise quarterback. That's it, and that's all. Now I just mentioned the the defensive issues. I don't you know I don't know if it's guys are confused or if it's a scheme issue, but this is an article by Marcus Mosher from the Raiders Wire. Uh, he says the Raiders have a Jonathan Abram problem, and it needs to be solved. And I think this is pretty interesting, and I want to hear you guys' feedback on, on what he has to say here. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about PFF grades and, and how guys like Corey Littleton are among the, the worst in their, you know, position set. Jonathan Abrams right there, too. One of the worst safeties in coverage. And I stated it earlier, I think this was a blown coverage from the Chiefs game on Travis Kelsey. It looked like the left side of the field, Damon Arnett, check to man coverage the right side was supposed to stay in zone um abram i i don't know it i don't know why you would leave the middle of the end zone open you have to be playing three high there right there's no way you're going cover two and a man man coverage on the left side and zone on the right like it just doesn't make sense i think abram got happy feet he saw mahomes looking to scramble and he wanted to make a big play and left his zone open i could be totally wrong here but I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen it from Sanjeet T says uh, he thinks it was a cover six that, you know, that that area was just supposed to be open and, and Abram was coming down to the, the middle area of the field. That doesn't make any sense to me. But um, at least in that situation, it makes no sense to, to leave the end zone open that, you know, they're taking a shot. So, look, I you know, I've seen it drawn up on Twitter a ton of times. Nobody knows except for Paul Gunther and the defense. Nobody else knows. But in my opinion, that looked like a blown coverage. Um, you could see Damon Arnett throw his hands up like, what the hell, man? So that leads me to think, okay, is there confusion going on? Did did somebody miss a call? Was one side of the field going to man, the other side going to zone, and and, and Abram didn't get, get didn't get the info? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer to that, and that's why you know I still don't know what's wrong with this defense. You can say fire Paul Gunther all you want. But if you got a safety who's blowing coverages and you know is one of the worst coverage safeties in the league, that's not a defensive coordinator issue. That's a player issue. And I love Abram, but between you know the senseless penalties, the poor coverage, um, I something's got. He's got to clean it up a little bit, I think. But um, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go full force and say, look, this was Jonathan Abram's fault that we lost the game, because I don't know what the coverage was supposed to be. In my opinion, it was blown, but that's just me. Let me hear what you guys got to say. On a brighter note, this defense may have just gotten a little bit better. Uh, the Raiders just picked up two former first-round picks in Vic Beasley and Tack McKinley. Um, this this could go either way. Um, obviously, they, nobody wanted Tack. Uh, the dude went through three teams, failed a bunch of physicals, so that's going to be um, a project, I think, of him getting healthy at least and then seeing where he's at from there. Vic Beasley, I think, can help us out. We we need some edge rush uh, for sure. Uh, Max Crosby has six sacks. Carl Nassib has a sack and a half, and I, I don't know if any other edge rusher has a sack besides those guys. So uh, I'm hope I'm hoping Vic Beasley can jump in there right away and make a make a big impact because this defense needs to put pressure on quarterbacks. We can't keep leaving it up to the secondary who's still young and like I said earlier, earlier looks to be freaking confused out there. So let's keep the fingers crossed that Vic Beasley. Uh, can come out and have another another big year like he did back in the day. Uh, he he led the league in sacks one year. So this dude's got potential. Tack, I don't know about that dude. He's been passed around more times than a blunt at a party. So um, who knows what's going to happen with him. But we do have reinforcements on the way for this defense. So that's a positive. Uh, John Gruden taken from you know the Al Davis playbook, going and getting guys that are uh, outcasts, bringing them to have a, a revival. Nelson Aguilar one of those guys you know um so i like it we either get better or we cut them no big deal right 
Let's talk injuries and COVID lists real quick before we jump into the Falcons. Corey Littleton back at practice. He is off the COVID list. Uh, let's see where they put him. I think Nick. I think Nick Moore has been playing really well, and Nick Kwiatkowski has been playing really well. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle Corey Littleton going forward because he has not been good, um, and I think we've been better without him. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm pulling for him to be the guy that we thought he was. Right. I, I'm pulling for that, but uh, time will tell. It's up to Gruden, it's up to Gunther, and we'll see what they decided come Sunday. First up, Damon Arnett sat out on Wednesday with an illness. He's back to full practice on Thursday, so that's great news. We should have Damon Arnett out there. Next up, Eric Harris. Light practice with a calf. Thursday did not practice, so that's up in the air. And then we jump down to Amik Robertson, still out with the illness. And other than that, we're good to go. So we're looking at possibly missing Amik and Eric Harris. Um, I don't know what's going on with Trent Brown. I don't know if he is even on the team or if he's even in this country right now. I have no idea what's going on with him. Uh, I guess we'll just wait and see there. But um, other than that, Raiders are looking healthy. Uh, We actually did get news that Richie Incognito is out for the year. He's getting surgery, so that's a big blow. Um, I I totally forgot to mention that. That that should have been a story on its own, but um, hopefully most of you guys catch the back half of this video and you know that's that's a big loss for this offensive line that's already dominant and had a chance to come back and even be even better so i'm gonna miss richie this year uh who knows how many years he has left in the tank but the dude was playing at a pro bowl level so fingers crossed that he comes back next year nice and strong and healthy and and he can put in one or two more for us and uh we can you know get that man a super bowl ring that'd be dope now let's jump over to the falcons they're all good to go. Uh, Todd Gurley, Hayden Hurst, and Quadre Olsen are not practicing this week as of now. Uh, they might be a game time decision. Who knows? But uh, if they're if they're short Todd Gurley and Hayden Hurst, that, that helps out a Raiders defense that's struggling. And uh, that Falcons offense is pretty powerful. So um, let's see what happens with Todd Gurley and Hayden Hurst. But those are two guys to keep an eye on for the rest of the week. And uh, moving forward, let's go talk about these Falcons, man. So the Falcons are struggling this year, but... I mean, they're better than three and seven for sure. Um, this offense, very explosive, got a lot of talent on it. Uh, they're 16th out of 32 in scoring, so right around the middle of the pack. Uh, their defense has not been good, and they've lost a couple shootouts. Man, they've been in some high-scoring games. Uh, if you take a look, they got the Seahawks 25-38. They lost. Cowboys 39-40. They lost. 26-30 to the Bears. They lost. They let the Bears put up 30 points on them. I mean, that's a good sign for the Raiders. If the Bears are putting up 30 points on your defense, you got something really messed up. Uh, you jump down to the Vikings. They, they put a 40-burger on the Vikings. So this, this offense can score some points. Uh, their defense is pretty shaky. So this is a really big opportunity for the Raiders to answer back after a tough loss. A big opportunity here to go put up 35, 40 points on this team and, and just blow them out of the water. And that's what I expect. I, I expect the Raiders to come back angry. And uh, Falcons aren't going to have a good day, man. Um, you know, we, we, we might see a little bit of a shootout. Obviously, our defense needs work. And uh, they got one of the best receivers in the game with Julio Jones. If Todd Gurley's out, that hurts them a little bit. If Hayden Hurst is out, hurts them a little bit. Those are two really good guys for them. But uh, yeah, I, I got the Raiders taking this game, man. The Falcons convert 40% of their third downs as opposed to the Raiders 51%. Um, also, the Falcons in the red zone are at 51%, while the Raiders are at 61%. But the big thing is, is that Falcons' defense in the red zone is allowing uh, a score 75% of the time. That's that's terrible. So the Raiders' offense definitely has the edge, and the Raiders' offense is just better overall. They're ranked 8th in scoring, as opposed to the Falcons' 16th. And they're around the same um, for defensive stats. They're like 25 and 26 in defense, so... I expect the Raiders to fully come out here and and, and put up a dominating performance. They need to answer back after last week. People know what kind of team the Raiders are right now. They're getting some respect. They need to keep the foot on the gas pedal through this back half of the schedule. It it gets easier at this point, right? But you cannot slow down because you cannot lose to the Falcons. You can't lose to the Jets. And you got to go beat the Colts and the Dolphins to really secure yourself a spot in the playoffs because those two teams are, are battling, man. Especially the Dolphins. They're... They're in that wild card hunt. And um, with the Colts and the Titans, who knows who's going to be, you know, the one who ends up having to take the wild card in that division. So it's important we go beat the Colts and the Dolphins. If we beat the Colts, the Dolphins, the Jets, and the Falcons, 
it's pretty much a wrap to get into the playoffs, and then we end up finishing at least 10-6, and six, which was my prediction at the start of the year. I think the Raiders have a possibility of winning out here. You got the Falcons, the Jets, the Colts, the Chargers, the Dolphins, and the Broncos. The Raiders could win out and go 12-4. and four. They don't need to to make the playoffs, and unless the Chiefs falter and drop a couple games in a row, it's not going to matter anyways. Um, so the key thing is beat the Colts and beat the Dolphins and let the rest of the chips fall where they may. Look, guys, I'm sorry if it was a little low energy today. I've got a ton of things on my mind. It, it took a lot for me to even sit down and, and put this video out. So I hope you guys do understand, and um, you'll be hearing from me after the game for sure. I, I'll, make, I'll make sure that I get a, a reaction out after the game because... I, I don't like missing this stuff, man. I, I like making these videos. It it, it does a lot for me. It, you know, I get to interact with you guys. I get to talk about the Raiders. And, and I have a lot of fun doing it. And it's cool to create something of my own, you know. But um, with everything going on, it's been kind of a, a cloud over my head. And it's, it's been hard for me to sit down and get this done. So I feel good finishing up right now. I just, you know, I, I feel like this wasn't my best work. And, and I feel kind of like my head's not all here because it's not. So... Just wanted to apologize for that. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I appreciate all the support. Um, I love you guys so much. Raider Nation, peace out. Till next time, let's go get those Falcons. Boy, peace out.